Welcome back. I'm Jonathan Kidd, and um, you're watching or even listening on the, uh, on the, no, to the Chelsea Fancast. And here's something from Ken Barkway on Twitter. <clears throat> Never cease to be amazed by Darren Mantle's memory. Thanks, Ken. Sweet. Was yeah, that, I presume that was all the Brentford stuff, was it? The fact that you knew all these things? No, was yeah, it I don't just know generally. It was, was, Ken, 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 Ken perhaps you could tell us which specific thing we should be impressed by. Uh, Maybe it was in the Juventus game. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, Nevada, yeah, Juventus. That was very good. Yeah. That was very good. Yeah, yeah. I don't even remember us playing, playing Juventus, just goes to show. What season was that? Six years ago, you said? We, it was 08 09. 08 09, yeah. It was about March time. The best time we did was that we're all oh, bouncing yeah, and yeah, cheering. Yeah, yeah. I There's a great clip of all the fans I remember. doing Essie, the bouncing. Essie, we're all bouncing. So, yeah. um, um, time for Chelsea yeah, Chatter Stats. I'm waiting for this thing. I'm waiting. <laughs> Come on, Jonathan, oh, shed in Seattle. Thank you, mate. Filling dead air with worse air. <laughs> <laughs> Get you. Thanks. Get off. Oh, that was Darren. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, actually. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I'm being rude. And you were talking about the... Um, not so you much heard air. It. Mm -hmm. You must have heard, because off air, everybody, Darren... Uh, I should have how can I put it? Not so much air as wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah Darren... Um, <laughs> Again, this Darren man. farted rather Flatulent, loudly. Think, with, with, the, uh, with great joy, in fact. Words. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Shed in Seattle. I thought you were talking about the... Uh, <laughs> The show generally. You weren't. You were talking about um, Darren because you heard it on Mixler. Yeah, everybody, tune in on Mixler because there's a completely different show going on in the break. You're missing the best you. bit. You're missing the best bit anyway. <laughs> Here we go with the stats. Diego Costa has failed to score in his last seven Champions League games for Chelsea since scoring against Chelsea. Chelsea, I've got a lift for Atletico Madrid last season. Brana Ivanovic has scored seven Champions League goals since 2009, more than any other defender. What a great stat that is. Hasn't he that. also scored more goals in the last X number of seasons from open play than Steven Gerrard? Oh, oh wow. Yeah, yeah. Bounty. I, I love John that. Terry has as well. I yeah. completely yeah. love that stat. Oh, what a great stat. Thank you. Thank you, mm. Clive. Chelsea have gone 16 games in the league without being awarded a penalty. And this is only, their worst run since 2009. We've only had two penalties in the league this season, as opposed to Man City's seven. Yeah, well. Which shows that there's a it, certain there's imbalance. A, there's a, there's an imba I, I would go as far as to say a bias. I think uh, innate bias is probably the kindest one. I love that, innate. I love that. Good Do you word. think a conspiracy? Yeah, uh, yeah a, cons a conspiratorial innate bias, mm. I think. No, but perhaps to a not. Yeah, they are. They are. Yeah, but I, it sounded. Innate? I was being polite. Yeah, you were. Thank you. Innate or inane? Yeah, in, uh, well, that's and that as well. well. It's only taken seven games for Kurt Zuma to concede his first foul for Chelsea FC in the Premier League, which you mentioned earlier. I do. Branislav Ivanovic has now scored more goals for Chelsea FC than Ramirez and Oscar. Mm, that's a little mm. bit oh, telling. Good. Ramirez, uh, other than the fantastic Barcelona goal. Um, Cannot shoot really at all, can he, poor man? Hey, mind you, he had a he had a go in the Burnley game, which was about several mm -hmm. inches uh, inches wide. I get I'm getting worried about their inability to hit the target, which I think is may cost us dear, and, uh, well, it's, and it's I, I don't Costa, want it to be. But I'm getting this. Oh yeah, it's when Costa's Costa, not scoring. When Costa's That's not the real costing problem. us, yeah. Not, when he's I, costing I think it, Spy yeah. actually, when he was on the show, summed up Ramirez. He said he doesn't create chances; he creates situations. Oh, clever, clever. Mm. He's good spy, isn't he? Mm. Chelsea are one of three teams still unbeaten in the Champions League this season, alongside Porto and Real Madrid. Good one. And now, Chelsea Chatter's stat of the week. And this is something that I had a, a mention of the other day when we were talking about the black kit with the, the puke down the front, which I didn't enjoy. <laughs> the blue puke, the light blue puke. Chelsea FC are undefeated in their last 25 games when wearing a yellow kit. Mm. There we are. So I think we should wear yellow all the time. Going back to the two. I don't think even think we wear blue now. We should wear yellow. That's the two thousand nine cup final. Yes. For more Chelsea stats and history, go to www.chelseachatter.com. Follow him on Twitter at Chelsea Chatter. Go on, your Chatter. Great stats. So. Um, is an announcement about uh, the Chelsea Supporters Trust, a very good and well-attended Chelsea Supporters Trust meeting. You, you went, did you say? You I did, there? yeah, it was a good did time. You, did you speak? Did you chat to anybody? No, no, I didn't. You're just no. attending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's take it all in. Was held after the game on Saturday, the Q&A session, that's question and answer for some of you who don't understand, with special guests Inspector Jim Brockway, PC Paul Wright from the Football Intelligence Unit, and Amanda Jacks from the Football Supporters Federation 
was extremely informative. I, I, I sent a question and I wondered if it was asked, which was why do stewards have to go onto the pitch and prevent players from going up to their fans? And is it, as a safety thing, why do they have to touch the players? I really think that stewards shouldn't be there to lay their hands upon a professional footballer on the pitch. I mean, the interestingly, tennis. they have a lot of questions read out that have come in by email, but that wasn't among them. That's a real shame because it was. We will never know the answer. We'll never know the answer. I would really love never to will. have known. Perhaps somebody thought I was taking the mickey. <laughs> um, <laughs> Being me. Um, as if you missed it, the meeting is up as a podcast via Chelsea Fancast. Just check the website, SoundCloud, and iTunes. And of course, if you want to join the trust, it's only five pounds or free for non voting members. But fancy, personally, I fancy a vote. Um, join up via the website, Chelsea Supporters Trust.com. And I, I'm trying to actually renew my membership, and uh, I've forgotten um, my password and my. Uh, uh, username and um, I did exactly the same, Johnson. Yeah. So you're not alone. It's Thank an you very much. Thing, Thank you. It's an age thing. But you could give a fiver to Chidge next time you see him, and I'm sure he'll pass it on. I'm not convinced <laughs> that's going to happen. Good I also think yes. my memory is such he'll ask me for another fiver the following week. So, um, CFC UK. Um, anything on uh, anything on there you'd like to? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, he's shared in with Seattle was saying, Darren, yes, the best bits. So. Yeah, yeah, Darren's great, they were saying. That's good. We know that, yeah. Um, <laughs> CFC UK, <laughs> this month's issue is now out, be available at the CFC UK store, opposite Fulham Broadway 2, but all home games and away games. If you can't get it there, you can always get it digitally, difficult word to say, by subscribing online at cfcuk.net or via colonialdistribution.com in Canada and the USA. Another announcement, Canners Down Under. I have to say, I thought Canners was brilliant mm. on, um, as a, uh, an ambassador for the, uh, the problem in the Metro um, with, uh, with Garth Crooks, who was very good. They were a very good double act, worked very well and, um, on, on Sky and, uh, and wherever. And uh, he also managed to publicise his book at the same time, which I thought was quite canny That's of him, canny. being mm. Canners, canny Canners. Um, but he's, he's our mate because he's been on here. We've enjoyed having him mm. very much. He's been, he's, he's, uh, his um, assessment of goal scoring will, will stay with me forever. His, the joy of his scoring a goal and a couple of occasions just belting the wards to, ball towards the goal and having no idea whether it was going to go in or not. And then when it was going in, just being completely you know, over the moon about it. It was fantastic. Um, Paul Canover will be meeting Chelsea supporters at various events in Australia in March and April. He'll be in Adelaide on Saturday the 21st of March, Sydney Friday the 27th of March, Melbourne Saturday the 28th of March, and Perth Saturday the 4th of April. For more information on these events, email adelaide at chelseaaustralia.com, Gareth Hemmings at hotmail.com, Melbourne at chelseaaustralia.com, and Aussie Dawn at optusnet.com. AU. Um, and there's another one which is Canners at the Monty. Canners is doing an event a bit closer to home. Be doing a Q&A at the Monty in Montpellier Place, Brighton, on Thursday, March the 5th at 7.30. Tickets are five pounds on the door. Now, Chelsea Fans Against Racism. If you're interested in joining Oliver Reed's group, Chelsea Fans Against Racism, as discussed earlier, then join the Facebook group, Chelsea Fans Against Race Racism, or you can email Chelsea Fans Against Racism at hotmail.com. Um, uh, there's a quick letter from uh, Oliver Reed, which I could read out. Um, it's not that quick. It's not quick. And looking at it, it's... Uh, it's um, 17 pages, it's, front and back. I would go to say... Eight pages. I won't read it out. <laughs> um, yeah. What we need individuals to join the Facebook page, share it, use the hashtag, buy the t shirts, badges, download, print the poster, and display it. We also need individuals to get involved. Be prepared to get down to the bridge early to help give out posters. Help design a website. Finish the graphic for the t shirt. Can we put the CSA badge on it? Help set up online funding streams to sell the t shirt and receive donations. Offers of donations, a press officer, more admins for the Facebook group and Twitter. Individuals interested should email chelseafansagainstracism at hotmail.com to express their interest in getting involved that provides their name, contact details, what skills or contacts they may have and what level of involvement they would like. Chelseafansagainstracism at hotmail.com and that's from Oliver Reed. So, um, Make sure you send us some good stories and photos by emailing the show during the week at chelseafancast at um, gmail.com. Now, in the meantime, I'd actually like to discuss what do we think the team is going to be against, um, the team is going to be against uh, Spurs on Sunday. 
Corso in goal. Ivanovic, Terry, Zuma, Luis. Now, is there any Has chance? The is there any chance yeah. that Matic is going to be? Is going to be uh, I, I one game so. minimum? He'll I, get banned. I, I think there is a chance that he will be playing. Really? I, am, I really do think that. I think particularly the way in which things worked out today, with no charges being brought against Barnes, that's a one slim chance. And I'm but in what, what so how does that how does that work in the in Sim the simply because as Barnes has got away with a far worse thing scot free, how can the FA maintain punishment against Matic when he already got punished and Chelsea were docked effectively two points? But isn't it the incident. opposite? If they think there hasn't been a foul committed, they just think that he's reacting in a... Uh, but they, in sorry, a the, the tribunal's three former referees, they'll know a foul has been committed. I thought the ref saw it. it. If the referee says he saw it, though, they can't do anything against Barnes. They can't do anything against Barnes, and they won't do anything against Barnes now. But when Matic comes up on his appeal, that's the question. But why does Barnes getting off today change it? when? Because, they because if Barnes it? has been banned for three games, they'd say, well, it's equal. They both well, they just banned each though, other. The had, if the referee had seen it, I don't know if they could have done that. No, if the referee saw it. Therefore, Barnes gets away scot-free. Yet the people looking at Matic will see that Barnes did things, even though he got away with it scot-free, and that the punishment is unequal. Well, unfair. Matt, it should have at least waited for a referee to sort things out before sorting things out himself. Oh, of course he should have. So, but, but, and also but it's he, not got the he got punished on the yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not like the ten men, I think, that made us draw. It's Mourinho just being too defensive. I, and I think if Matic had been on the pitch when that corner came in, it wouldn't have been a goal. We I think one extra, one extra, one extra two, we should have been two goals up by then. I think anyway. we'd have scored, actually, if Matic had still been on the last yeah. 20 minutes. Uh, uh, the reason I think Matic won't get away with it is because he was guilty of what he was accused of, of violent, of violent conduct. He went and pushed the player over, mm. and that's why I think the, the ban will stick. At least one game he'll get banned for. If not yeah. three, one. He might be back for Southampton, he might be back for West Ham way, but he won't play in the League Cup final. I think if he does get banned, they'll, um, they'll just implement the normal sanction, which is three games. One gonna, question is whether Mourinho is going to get charged with his programme on television yesterday. Which had the backing of the, of the Chelsea board, by Absolutely, the way. and I'm sure that they thought we're going to take it to the line. And let's see if the FA have a crack at us on this. In some ways, I'd love it if the FA came up and charged him now, because it would just show where they're standing, mm -hmm. and it would just bring it to a peak. I think after how little he talked last time after the Liverpool match, I don't think they're going to do anything to Mourinho, because they know they'll now lose a lot of entertainment mm -hmm. value from him. Because he will just say the bare minimum, not give them any sound bites they want, and... But then again, he can entertain without saying anything. True. Uh, Tells him what he's not going to say. <laughs> he was very tactful about <laughs> Arsenal. Did you notice on the programme last night? He, mm. he just said, um, you know, uh, what a wonderful opportunity for a manager to have as long as he likes <laughs> to do what he what he wants. Which, uh, which, um, and he, and and he, he didn't. He avoided the question of asking whether he got on with Wenger. I think the, uh, mm -hmm. they, they asked him some very pertinent questions. Did you see this programme that was no, on? No, no, I didn't see it. It was I a programme called Goals on Sunday, which uh, apparently he'd asked to be on to put, to put Chelsea's yeah. view. The Poor them. James Beattie got knocked off and probably lost his appearance. Oh, did he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they probably paid him, I'd have thought. They, oh. yeah, who would you have, James Beattie or Jose Mourinho <laughs> on it? I think, mm. Well, Beattie did That's score a goal against Chelsea in 11 seconds. He did, yeah. but then we won 3-1, didn't That's we? That's right, yeah. He also yeah. headbutted the back of William Gallus's head and got sent I was off there. I, yeah, yes, yeah, I was there that day, yeah. We, I think well, we, we were there together. In Everton. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. I think we were. I think Tim Langton had organised a... Very probably. Was it Everton tour or something? It was up at Everton. It was at Everton. Everton, oh, definitely yeah. Everton. Yeah. It was a morning, he an early, pursued, early him, kick he yeah, pursued him down the pitch, didn't he? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's right. Tried to kick him back. a few times, and then finally just put his head in. And Moyes was very upset. But, by and it. also, he was slightly surprised he'd been sent off. I remember. See, interesting. Moyes said at that occasion that, oh, if Gallus had been an English player, he wouldn't have gone down so easily, which is fairly outrageous. Well, racist. So he'd have, yeah, he'd have accepted. Look at us all together. Gallus was doing that defender thing of shielding the ball yeah. over the byline, wasn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you don't expect to be head-butted in the back no, of your head, really do you, when that, where that's happening? Those were the days where you liked Gallas. Mm. Yeah. yeah, they were, they were, yeah. they did, yeah, for a period, yeah. I wonder how many players there are who we've, um, we've gone off as they've uh, gone on to other clubs. Not po that Poyet, Poyet, Poyet unfortunately, yeah, didn't, yeah, didn't do terribly well. And I I'm, would I'm, be intriguingly, um, it, what um, Jose mentioned yesterday about um, uh, Frank, that he wasn't sure whether Frank would now come back to the yeah. club, which, um, which was a little bit dismaying. Because he said he thought the idea was that Frank was going off to America to play in the uh, mm. Lampard will be back, and then Mourinho and then back. he would then immediately be fast tracked back into the club in doing whatever he wanted. Yeah. And the the interviewer said, "Is that going to be the case now?" And he said, uh, "I do not know." He said, 
So he made it sound as though the door had been closed. He did. But that's all he can say. When he's at Man City, he's not going to speak yeah. to any of him. I think it's classic Jose. Jose and Frank, I think they get on well. Yeah. What do you think predictions for Sunday then, chaps? Well, I didn't finish the team yet, so I think... Oh, Fabregas I'm so <laughs> sorry. I do apologise. Perhaps you could give us the rest of the players. He won't play Cudado, I don't think. I think he'll play... No, think go he'll back to his old yeah. trick of William, Oscar, yeah. Hazard and uh, Costa. And obviously Fabregas and Ramirez. Ramirez will fit in instead of uh, yeah. Matic then. Yeah. And who will it be, Lewis or uh, Dave, will be playing fullback? As per my team selection, Lewis. It was Lewis, OK. Mm -hmm. Dave okay. will be in the bench. Aspie will be in the bench. Anybody else want to go? Well, I think there's in. an option that he might, rather than play Ramirez holding, he might use either Luis or, or, or um, Aspie. They're sort of we, spare, one of them. We've got eight games, uh, sorry, eight days without a game before Sunday, but only three before West Ham on the Wednesday. Yes. And that might factor into the West, the West Ham game is now a very, very, very important, important game. Very important indeed. And well, West Ham, sadly, are doing quite as well. Is their, as is every single mm. game. And Arsenal they've, way, they've really got to, yeah. to, to increase their, um, their shot-taking and their ability to, uh, to, to put games away. I'm afraid we have to hope that Liverpool carry on with their relative we do, we do. Moment, which is horrible. So what's the, what are the predictions then? Are we allowed them yet now, yep. Darren? We are. Oh, good. Thanks. Right we can do them now. Anybody else you want to talk present. about the team? No? Okay. Um, predictions? Jake, what do you reckon? Uh, I think 3-1 with uh, William getting a berth. I love it. I love it. Well done, yes. And I think 3-2 after extra time. Like the Liverpool game. Mm. Okay. Kesman's going to score. It's got to have three there, because <laughs> Ivanovic has got to get his hat trick at long last. But other than that, <laughs> three nil then. Yeah, I think it's going to be 1 1 at extra time, and then we'll win 2 1 at extra time with, um, with a hazard goal, I think. I'm being very specific here. I don't know why that just came to me. It's just appeared. 4 1. Jose 4 1. Won. Jose, I want to embarrass him after New Year's. Oh, day. I love it. How about 5 1 and Drogba scores? The most magnificent goal, which he just picks that would up never happen. Yeah. from a goal lead. from a, was it <laughs> Lampard boots the ball down the pitch. He chests it, turns around and volleys it into the net. One of the great all-time goals that was. One well, of the was great that Jogba goals. No, this no, was at Spurs. Was at Spurs. This oh, was yeah, yeah, sorry, this was, this was at Wembley. It would be nice to get a, do a couple of dodgy penalties, have a few of their players sent off for absolutely no reason. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, So when was the when was the game up at, up at uh, Everton when Chelsea won? 3-2. 3-2, having been behind Balak scored and twice, scores. and all three goals were from outside the box. December 2006. Balak, Lampard and Drogba. That is very good. December and that was Drogba's knee, first knee slide. Did Balak did a free kick that hit the post and hit the keeper and went in? Off yeah, the off his back, yeah. Jonathan, this is why you have what, someone no, relatively young on the show. He has, still has a memory. Yeah, it's a memory, yeah. yeah. I was going to say that, that Ken was absolutely correct. You are phenomenal. I think I'm right. You are absolutely <laughs> The pressure's no, on I, now, I, please I, be right. I think we pretty much got it all there, didn't we? I think December 2006. Maybe no. We've got one minute left, so... Um, I've got a minute to read this. I can read it in about 15 seconds, actually. So I'm going to quickly look at, uh, at uh, anybody. Any say goodbye to me. Um, Mixler, thanks. You've been fantastic. Really, really contributing a lot. Andy, J.K. Like, you did a lot on FFP, actually. Um, it's a shame we didn't read it while, after you'd finished your segment. There's yeah, there's stuff that we should have done. That. I'm sorry, but it was diff difficult air. to fit everything in. And it wasn't dead air. It was your dead <laughs> air he was talking about. Um, Frank will get any job he wants at CFC when his career yeah, is over. I says agree. Mike Harvey won. Well, I we'll see, we'll Harvey. see. We'll see, we'll see. So, anyway, don't forget to follow the show on Twitter, Chelsea, at Chelsea Fancast. Make sure you check out the great blogs on our website, chelseafancast.com, where you can also find all the information how to watch, listen, or download the show. Uh, many thanks to my guests this week. Fantastic, Jake Cohen. Fantastic. Um, bravo. Well done. Oh, Brilliant. thanks very much for having me. Thank you. Brilliant. 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 Um, Dr. Martin Boots. Always a pleasure. Uh, Clive O'Connell. Darren Mantle. No, Andy Silman. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Until then, keep it blue, keep it carefree, keep it Chelsea. Up the Chelsea!